Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the fourth Sunday of our Easter celebrations, more affectionately known as Good Shepherd Sunday, because every year on this year, we hear readings that speak of Jesus as our shepherd and we being the sheep. Um, and so that's the theme for this day as we come together. In terms of announcements, um, just a, just a couple to to go through. One of the one of the things that has been asked is uh, if anyone um, would like to get access to a hymn book or a prayer book to use during the online worship to be able to sing along. Um, prayer books not so much because we uh, we have the words up on the screen. But if you would like to get a copy of a hymn book so that you have the hymns that we're going to be uh, that Christina is singing and would like to sing along at home, um, send an email to the church office. And once we have a list of people who are interested, we will uh, certainly uh, uh, arrange a system for making that happen. Um, also, um, it's been brought to our attention that we may, in fact, have not up-to-date information for some people's phone numbers and email addresses. If, if you think that we may not have your phone number or email, if you're not getting emails from the church, um, please make sure you uh, get in contact with the church office so that we can uh, update that as well. We have, in this past week, we have held three virtual coffee hours um, using the Zoom platform. And for the most part, there were a couple of uh, people who were sadly unable to connect. Um, but for the most part, people were able to figure it out. And what those who uh, were able to uh, access the, uh, the meeting and the, and the time, we had some good conversation and it was appreciated by uh, those who participated. We have committed that we're going to be offering uh, uh, Zoom coffee hours um, every two weeks or so. Um, and if you didn't participate in the first one but think you might like to give it a try, do not hesitate to, uh, to send me a quick email. Um, Bill Ward at Dio, D I O, Huron, H U R O N, dot org, O R G. Um, don't hesitate to, uh, to, uh, to send me a, an email saying that you'd like to participate in that. Um, and so I think that might be it in terms of announcements. Continue to be thankful for the breakfast program and the caps that are being made and all the work that's being done to, uh, to care for the administration of the church. Um, and uh, uh, please know that I continue to hold each and every one of you in my prayers every day. Miss you and look forward to the day when we uh, can gather in this space. I did say at the virtual coffee hours that I think our very first time coming back together for public worship, we should encourage all of us to, uh, to wear our, bring our mugs of coffee and uh, come to church in our house coats and pajamas, as I'm uh, thinking that many of you are taking advantage of these online worship opportunities um, in the comfort of your own home. And so perhaps we should uh, ease the transition back and all wear our pajamas. Anyways, uh, let us pray and let us celebrate.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute them to, and the proceeds of all who had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me for the probably one of the best known psalms in the whole of the Bible, the 23rd Psalm. And the response will be, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me, and you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the first letter of Peter. For it is a credit to you if you, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he endured himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sin in his body on the cross, so that free of sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd, the guardian of your souls. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and will go out and will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I pray that I might speak to you today in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is, without a doubt, one of the most well-known psalms in all of Scripture. The 23rd Psalm might even rival John 3.16 with its message that God so loved the world as the most well-known passage in all of Scripture. The 23rd Psalm has become to funerals what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 with its love is patient and love is kind, what that has become to weddings. The Lord is my shepherd. There's just something about that song. There's something about that image of God as our shepherd, as the one who feeds us when we are hungry or leads us to the still waters when we're thirsty, or as the one who will go out and search for us if we're lost, protects us when danger comes our way. There's just something about this image of God as our shepherd that encourages us to trust, to trust that our God really is present with us and leading us in all the moments of our lives, including those inevitable darker and more painful periods of life, moments when we find ourselves walking through the valley of the shadow of death, Countless people over the years have turned to the 23rd Psalm to find hope in the face of despair, to find a light that shines for them in the darkness that they are living in, to hear words of reassurance that God really is with them in their suffering, and to discover the source of their courage, to discover the source of their courage during those times in life where they feel as if they're being called to, to die and let go of one, one, an old way of living, to, to experience a death in a sorts of letting go of a particular way of living, and to follow God into a completely new chapter in their lives. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Words that promise us, no matter how dark things might sometimes get, no matter how alone or full of fear you might be feeling, no matter how strong the grief or the sorrow might be in your life, no matter how overwhelmed you are, those words promise us that we are not alone, that from the moment we are born to the moment that we die, and all of the times in between, our lives are in God's hands. We are the sheep. God is our shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. But just like any relationship that we have, just like any relationship, it really does take time to develop that kind of trust in our shepherd. It takes time before we are able to recognize the voice of the one who calls us by name, just as Jesus called Mary by name outside of the empty tomb on Easter morning. It takes time to develop a relationship. It takes time to find the courage and to trust where the shepherd is trying to lead us in our lives, especially when it seems as if the road that we are being called to walk on is heading straight towards the darkest valley. It takes time to build that kind of trusting relationship. Krista Hesselink, she has a book called Life's Great Dare. And in that book, she talks about the time she took a group of 12-year-olds whitewater rafting as part of a summer camp experience. 
She said that one day they were gearing up to approach one of the tougher rapids on the river, and the water, it was running particularly high that day, so she knew that they had to maneuver the raft just right in order for all of them to stay dry and to stay in the boat. She said, put yourself in my raft for a minute. You're barreling down the river toward a monster rapid that's licking the edges of this daunting mass of black rock standing five feet out of the water. The sound of the rapids is deafening and your adrenaline is rushing. Krista, she said that as they got closer and closer to that rock, she started yelling from the back of the raft. She started yelling, lean into the rock. Lean into the rock. And to which all the kids looked at her like she had lost her mind. Why would you lean into the rock? But Krista, with all the experience she had in whitewater rafting, she knew that the only way they were ever going to come successfully out the other side of the rapid and arrive at the calm, clear waters at the other end was if all the weight in the boat was on one side, the side where the rock was. So she yelled, lean into the rock, lean into the rock, which again, if you think about it, it really does sound completely counterintuitive. Who, human nature is to want to run away from what scares us, not to lean or to walk directly into it. But their white water shepherd, she knew that this was the only way that they were going to get through the rough rapid without capsizing the boat. Of course, most of the girls decided that their white water shepherd was crazy. Only two of the people in the boat trusted her enough to lean into the rock. And with predictable precision, the back of the raft got sucked into the swirling rapid. They got tossed into the fast water, and let's just say the outcome wasn't pretty. Here's what I think. I think that right now, we are all being called to lean into the rock. Staying at home shutting down the economy, no gathering with families, no school for the kids, no public gatherings, parks being closed, rec recreational activities being canceled, all of what we are being asked to do is leaning into the rock. All of it goes against what we have come to expect out of life. All of it goes against the way we think, think things should be working and what we should be able to do. And leaning into the rock of this coronavirus pandemic, leaning into the rock hasn't been without its consequences. We know that many have lost their sense of financial security. People have lost their jobs don't know if they're going to have a job to return to. Some people are wrestling with, how am I going to pay my next mortgage or my next rent, rent payment? Many others have missed out on milestone events in their lives. School trips have been canceled. Grade eight, grand, grade eight graduation ceremonies or any kind of graduation ceremonies won't be happening this year. Weddings have had to be put on hold. Sports activities halted. Plays and concerts that we were looking forward to. And people that had been working so hard to prepare for those plays and concerts. All of it, gone. Some of us have loved ones who live in long-term care facilities. Loved ones that we can't see right now. And it breaks our hearts not to be able to be with them. Some of us have new members that have arrived in the family that we are aching to hold in our arms for the first time. Some of us are lonely. Some of us are anxious. Some of us are depressed and struggling with mental health issues because of all that we have been asked to do. 
Leaning into the rock is scary. Leaning into the rock is scary, and like some of those kids in the boat, there are some who question whether we should be doing that. Should we really be leaning into the rock during this time? There are some who just want things to go back to normal already. Open the economy, they say. Get back to school. Open the schools. Get back, get everything back to normal. Let's just get back to normal. But here's the thing. When God calls us to lean into the rock, which is what I really think he's doing, When God calls us to lean into the rock, when God calls us to follow him even through the valley of the shadow of death, scary and uncomfortable as it may be, God is always, when he calls us to follow him in that direction, God is always calling us to follow him in order that we might be led into new and abundant life. What if God doesn't want us to simply wait this out? What if God doesn't want us to simply wait this out until we can get back to the life we've always been living, to get back to life as usual? What if God is calling us to lean into this particular rock, to walk through this particular valley, so that we might discover new pasture to graze on? so that we might discover a new and abundant life to live. Maybe we are being offered the opportunity during these days to reflect on what it is that really matters to us in life. Maybe it's offering us the opportunity to think about what kind of life we want to go back to when this is all over. Do we want to go back to the hectic place the hectic pace of life that we've all been living, jumping from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and never really having time to slow down and enjoy the blessings of being with family and enjoying our downtime? Do we want to go back to that consumer buy, buy, buy kind of world that we've been living in? For you, maybe the answer is yes, but for others, maybe not. But I think that God is calling us to lean into this rock so that we might come to know and reclaim the abundant life that God longs for each one of us to live. Sometimes God calls us to lean into the rock, to find the courage to step away from what is safe and comfortable in our lives, and to walk in a direction that probably scares us. Sometimes God calls us to lean into the rock, to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because as our shepherd, God knows that this is the path that will keep us in the boat, that this is the path that will lead us safely through the rough waters and the dark valleys into something entirely new. Thanks to a sermon by Ken Anderson, I learned that there actually is a place that is called the valley of the shadow of death. It's located somewhere in Israel. I've shared this before, so you may have heard it. I've always thought that the 23rd Psalm, the valley of the shadow of death, was just a metaphor for how people feel when someone we love dies, or when we find ourselves going through a particularly difficult time in our lives. But it turns out there is an actual place that is called the valley of the shadow of death. It's an extremely, try to picture it, it's an extremely narrow passage within a mountain range And apparently shepherds have crossed through this valley since the time of Abraham, and they still do today. In fact, legend has it, King David, who who we assume wrote the 23rd Psalm, legend has it back in his own shepherding days, likely led his own sheep down through this particular valley long before he became the king of Israel. He likely led his flock down through this particular valley to the good pasture that was waiting at the other end. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Picture it again. The side walls of this valley, they're well over 500 meters high. To put that in perspective, that's nine times higher than Niagara Falls. 
And while the valley is seven kilometers in length, it's only about three to four meters wide at the bottom. And so this valley is so steep and so narrow that sunlight ne hardly ever makes it to the valley floor below. It truly is a scary place. It truly is a place of deep, dark gloom. It is one scary journey. But through the risk of flash floods, through the risk of rocks that could fall from the walls above, shepherds have led their flocks through this valley from the earliest times. And the sheep, they follow. They move through the valley without fear because they have confidence in their shepherd. They trust the one who is leading them. They trust that their shepherd will lead them safely through the dark valley and into a place where they will lack nothing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So that is my hope. That is my prayer during these scary and uncertain times. That we too might be able to move through our own valleys that we find ourselves in that we might be able to move through those valleys without fear because of our faith and because of our trust that we have in Jesus, our shepherd. And so may you, in coming to know your shepherd, may you be willing to lean into the rock, follow him in the path that always leads to abundant life. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. And if you're comfortable, say this in the quiet of your homes, or just say it in the quiet of your heart. For peace from on high, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for all churches, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop, Todd, for our clergy, Bill, and for all clergy, especially those clergy who are working so hard to bring services in this very strange time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for Justin, our Prime Minister, for Doug, our Premier, who are putting partisan aside to think of the people that they are serving, and for all leaders who should be following their example, and for all who are in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of London, and for every city and community. We're very fortunate to be in a first world country where we have resources, but let's think of those communities and resources where that do not exist in third world countries. For all who live in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvests, for the lack of food for people we are concerned, for food security, we hope that we will work together to make sure that there is enough for all. Let us share. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who travel by land, 
water, the air, although let us hope that most people will only be traveling when it's absolutely necessary during this time. For the sick and the suffering, especially the number of people whose names will appear on our circulated prayer list, the number is long because the need is great. We especially remember all the people that are in long-term care facilities who are suffering so much from this, this devastating virus, and also for the people who are outside of the long-term care facilities who worry about their spouses, their families, their children, their adult, their adult parents, because they feel that they can do little. For prisoners and captives, for their safety, their health, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all afflictions, strife, and need, especially people who in the front lines who are facing this COVID-19 throughout the world who don't have the proper facilities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially remembering the people that died when that helicopter went down in the Canadian Armed Forces during a NATO exercise. May their family find comfort and may all the bodies be retrieved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering St. Jude and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole lives to Jesus Christ, our Lord. To you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, and it can be online, that you will hear our requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this whole knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life for you. Father, you are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and in the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.